Chromatography Theory, Chapter 2, Data Acquisition Theory. This educational video has been brought to you by Chrome Perfect, the leading independent chromatography data system. In this video we will be using Chrome Perfect version 8 to demonstrate the topics being discussed. If you would like more information about our software, please visit our website at www.chromeperfect.com. Acquisition Theory. This chapter explains the mathematics behind data acquisition. The term data acquisition refers to the process that reads a signal at regular intervals and produces a digitized record of that signal. In chromatography, the signal is produced by a detector of some kind, and the record is a raw file. Detector signals are essentially continuous in both time and amplitude. The digitized record, as produced by the digital to analog DA, converter, is discrete in both time and amplitude. It is discrete in time because there are a finite number of data points, each data point represents the average of the signal in the preceding interval. It is discrete in amplitude because the detector signal has been converted into an integer, each data point is the result of rounding off the average signal in each interval. Therefore, the digitized record does not contain all of the information in the original detector signal. Information is invariably lost during the process of digitization. Fortunately, we do not need all of the information in the detector signal. Information theory will tell us how to get sufficient information for our purposes. There are only two issues. The sample rate must be fast enough to catch all meaningful changes in the signal. The amplitude must be measured precisely enough to see the smallest meaningful variation in the signal. Sampling rate. In chromatography, the sampling rate is typically in the range 1 to 200 samples per second, depending on the width of the peaks. In liquid chromatography, peaks may be up to a minute wide, and sampling rates in the range 1 to 5 samples per second are typical. In capillary gas chromatography, peaks are less than a second wide, and sampling rates in the range 20 to 200 samples per second are typical. Ordinary gas chromatography occupies an intermediate position with typical sampling rates of 5 to 25 samples per second. The usual rule of thumb states that, for accurate measurement of peak height and area, there should be at least 10 samples across the baseline width of the peak. The numbers we have just discussed reflect this rule. It may be appropriate to use a higher sampling rate in certain situations, for example, if the peak shape is of particular interest, or if the signal-to-noise ratio is poor. If the sampling rate is inadequate, then peak quantification accuracy will suffer. You can see the effect of degradation of peak shape by inadequate sampling, on the screen now. The tallest peak was sampled at 16 samples per second, and the other four were sampled at 8, 4, 2, and 1 samples per second. At the highest sample rate, the peak shape is well represented. As the rate is reduced, the apparent peak height is reduced because the top of the peak is lumped together with the sides, and the highest data point is significantly less than the true peak height. Area measurements will be compromised by similar inaccuracies in the lowest data points that affect the placement of the baseline, not shown. The apparent retention time is increased because each data point represents the signal in the preceding interval. The degradation of peak shape depends on the relationship between the sampling rate and the peak width. The following figure shows two chromatograms, sampled at 16 and 1 samples per second. The first peak is the same as in the previous figure and is quite degraded. The second peak is four times as wide as the first and is only slightly degraded. The third peak is four times as wide as the second and is hardly changed at all. Even at the reduced sample rate, the third peak still has over 20 data points across its width. An excessive sampling rate does not adversely affect quantification, but produces a larger raw file. Large files take longer to integrate and to plot. They also take up more room on disk, and, more significantly, in the archives. Range Many modern instruments now have digital detectors which have a far greater dynamic range. These do not suffer some of the range limitations experienced by older systems that were reliant on analog converters. 
Every digital to analog or analog to digital converter has a design range, within which it will measure signals accurately. Signals outside this range will pin the converter to its limit, and the output will no longer reflect the actual detector signal. The problem is illustrated by the chromatograms shown on screen. The upper trace shows an unlimited chromatogram with baseline noise, a large peak, and six smaller, but equally high, peaks on a downward sloping baseline. The lower trace shows the same chromatogram with limits imposed. The upper limit has cut off the top of the large peak, reducing its height and area significantly. The lower limit has cut off the baseline between the smaller peaks, which gradually disappear like islands sinking into a rising sea, as seen in the plot below. When the top of the peak is cut off, it looks much like an overloaded detector. However, close examination reveals that the trace is absolutely flat and free of noise when it hits the limit. Furthermore, the limits are sharp and always at the same voltages, which are characteristic of the digital-to-analog converter. By contrast, upon magnification, a trace produced by an overloaded detector still shows some noise, and the limit is soft. A solvent peak that runs into the upper limit is not always a problem since it is not quantified anyway. A baseline that runs into the lower limit is always a problem. To address these problems, one must adjust the detector's attenuation and zero so that the output voltage always lies within the converter's range. Noise and drift. The term noise refers to the variations in the chromatogram that do not represent the passage of substances through the detector. The term is usually confined to variations that occur on a time scale smaller than the peak width. Contributors to observed noise include flicker noise within the detector itself, pump noise caused by fluctuations in the flow through the detector, and sawtooth noise caused by line frequency hum introduced between the detector output and the digital-to-analog converter. The likely source of the noise may be recognized by the appearance of the noise on the chromatogram trace, as shown in the following figures. Flicker noise appears random. Pump noise appears like gentle waves, all alike and regularly spaced at the pump frequency, usually one every few seconds. Sawtooth noise is also distinguished by repeated fluctuations, but they tend to be more ragged, less regular, and slower. Sawtooth noise and pump noise may be eliminated, but flicker noise is normal. Most detectors produce flicker noise on the order of several microvolts, and this noise usually determines the height of smallest peak that can be detected. In the presence of noise, the baseline is never really flat, so tiny peaks vanish into the noise floor. Before they vanish, they become hard to quantify. A common rule of thumb states that the signal-to-noise ratio must be at least 10 to 1 for accurate quantification. With proper adjustment, Chrome Perfect can detect peaks with a signal-to-noise ratio as low as 1 to 1. The term drift refers to any slow variation in the chromatogram that occurs on a time scale larger than the peak width. There is no clear-cut boundary between noise and drift. The contributors to noise listed above can also cause drift. Other sources of drift include changes in ambient temperature and loss of a portion of the stationary phase at high column temperatures, column bleed. Drift seldom causes analytical problems and, except when caused by column bleed, is easily reduced by allowing sufficient time for the chromatograph to stabilize. Column bleed, on the other hand, is something that happens during every run, and can only be reduced by subtracting a chromatogram. Watch our Chapter 3 video on smoothing theory for more on noise and drift. Resolution Resolution is to the voltage, y-axis, what sample rate is to the time, x-axis. The resolution is the step size, the amount by which the detector signal must change to cause the converted detector signal to change from one value to the next. All digitized signals have a finite resolution, as determined by the digital-to-analog converter. The finite resolution may be seen by close examination of the chromatogram trace. A noisy baseline is the best place to look. The following figure shows a typical noisy baseline at low and high magnification. The lower trace clearly shows that many of the peak tops and troughs are at exactly the same voltage, which is another way of saying that the voltages are quantized. 
As mentioned above, most detectors produce flicker noise on the order of several microvolts, and this is usually greater than the step size. Therefore noise, and not resolution, is frequently what determines the height of the smallest peak that can be detected. In the presence of noise, increasing the resolution of the digital-to-analog converter simply provides a better measurement of the noise. Only when the detector is particularly quiet will increasing the resolution of the digital-to-analog converter improve the detection limit. The resolution of most digital-to-analog converters is given not in microvolts, but in bits. This refers to the number of bits in the binary integer that constitutes a data point. The number of different values that an n-bit number may have is equal to 2 to the nth power, and this is the dynamic range, the number of steps between the upper and lower limits of the converter. The full range, divided by the number of steps, is equal to the resolution, which is usually stated in microvolts. For example, the resolution of a particular device, such as the Chrome Perfect Tigra interface, might be 20 bits, and the full range may be 1 or 2 volts. The number of steps is 2 to the power 20, or 1.04 million. So the step size is about 1 microvolt on the 1 volt range, and 2 microvolts on the 2 volt range. The resolution determines the smallest peak height that may be accurately quantified. Accuracy will suffer when the errors introduced by the rounding off process are on the order of the peak height. The usual rule of thumb states that, for accurate measurement of peak height and area, the peaks should be at least 10 steps high. Peaks smaller than this may still be detected, and sometimes this is enough. On screen, we can see a highly magnified, noise-free chromatogram, with four small peaks, overlaid with the same chromatogram after rounding off, quantization, to the nearest microvolt. The vertical scale is in microvolts. Because these peaks are highly sampled, about 60 points across, there are several data points in each step, making them more distinct than they would normally be. The first peak is 12 steps high and will be accurately quantified. The second peak is borderline, and the third is highly distorted. The fourth is smaller than the step size, so it has been rounded down to a flat baseline and disappeared from the quantified chromatogram. Mathematically, the rounding off process consists of adding a small voltage, never more than half the step size, to the detector signal, such that the sum is exactly equal to the nearest step. The added voltage will be positive or negative, depending on whether the point is rounded up or down, and successive adjustments are uncorrelated. Therefore, the rounding off adjustments are another source of noise that is added to the signal by the digital-to-analog converter itself. This may seem strange, since the effect of this quantization noise is to make the baseline look less noisy. Nevertheless, it does act like noise, in that it causes errors in measurement and small peaks can vanish into the baseline just as they can vanish into the detector noise. This chromatogram is noise-free. If significant amounts of noise are present, then the noise may push the detector signal into adjacent steps and quantified noise will appear. The following figure shows the same chromatogram as before with a small amount of noise added. The noise appears as quantum hairiness on both the baseline and the peaks. When the noise spans several steps, the hairiness fades, and the quantized noise appears as shown in the first figure in this section. Note that the fourth peak, which had vanished into the baseline in the overlay plot above, has returned as a region of dense hairiness. When the noise in the signal is about equal to the step size, it has the paradoxical effect of increasing the resolution. Small peaks appear in ghostly form, yet if these be quantified as a single peak, they do yield meaningful peak area and peak width information. If the specified data sampling rate is less than the minimum that the hardware can support, then the hardware will run at its minimum rate and data points will be averaged, bunched, to lower the data rate to, or near the specified value. This averaging also reduces the apparent step size as seen in the raw file. However, it should not be thought that averaging improves the resolution. Because each data point is separately rounded to the nearest step before averaging, the round-off noise not significantly reduced. Maximizing use of available dynamic range. Chromatography is distinguished from most other scientific measurements by the large dynamic range required. 
Many chromatograms contain both large and small peaks, and both need to be accurately quantified. Occasionally, a chromatogram will have small peaks on tails of huge solvent peaks. Therefore, the acquisition hardware must be able to record large signals without sacrificing the ability to see small variations. For example, consider a 1 volt Tigra interface, a million steps, and a step of 1 microvolt. Assuming that we need 10 steps for adequate peak measurement, the smallest peak is 10 microvolts. The ratio of the largest possible peak, to the smallest, is 1 volt divided by 10 microvolts, which equals 100,000. This would be more than adequate if the entire range were used, but this is rarely the case. Normally the detector output is reduced somewhat to prevent the inevitable drift from causing the signal to run into one limit or the other. This is completely valid and does not significantly reduce performance. Sometimes, however, the detector signal is greatly attenuated and occupies only a small fraction of the available range. This frequently occurs when the acquisition hardware is inadvertently connected to the detector's chart recorder output, which saturates at 10 millivolts. Now only 1% of the available range is being used, and the ratio of the largest possible peak to the smallest is 10 millivolts divided by 10 microvolts which equals 1000. The chromatogram will appear normal until examined closely when the quantization will be apparent. Errors in quantification may go unnoticed unless the calibration curve includes data points at low levels, when the problem appears as an ability to get linearity across the entire calibration range. The solution is to ensure that the detector output uses most of the available range. For the Tigra interface in the example above, a detector baseline between 0 and 100 millivolts and an expected maximum peak height of 900 millivolts would be ideal, providing that negative peaks never occur. If negative peaks are anticipated, then the baseline output should be raised to the halfway point, around 500 millivolts. If this is done, then the Tigra interface would support a maximum peak height, positive or negative, of 400 millivolts and still have 100 millivolts on either side for drift. Some detectors have only a 5 or 10 volt output. In these cases, it is often desirable to attenuate the detector output so that it matches the acquisition hardware limits. A simple attenuator consists of two resistors, as shown on screen. The attenuation of this network is RA plus RB divided by RB. The values shown produce an attenuation of 39K plus 10K divided by 10K equals 49 divided by 10 is equal to 4.9. This network will reduce a 10 volt signal to a 2 volt signal. The exact value of the resistors is unimportant and resistors in the range 10K to 100K may be employed. Attenuators reduce peak height so the instrument must be recalibrated every time the attenuator is changed. Once this is done however, the attenuator has no effect on the calculated amounts. This concludes Chapter 2 of Chromatography Theory, brought to you by Chrome Perfect, the leading chromatography data system and software developer. If you would like more information about Chrome Perfect please visit our website at www.chromeperfect.com or call our sales team on 9735868551 thank you for watching please subscribe to our youtube channel for more chromatography and chrome perfect content and hit the bell icon to be notified when we upload new videos if you found this video useful please hit the like button